AMD's fastest GPU just got faster. Intel breaks the world record, and I am on the road in Arizona and look like this. Let's get in the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And uh, in case you don't know, we're currently doing for the Cannonball for the Cure charity stream where we're raising money to cure my son's rare disease. And right now we are on the trip back and still raising funds. And in fact, we're gonna be live as you're watching this episode right now. So if you wanna come watch us when you're done with this episode, we'd appreciate having you because we're still trying to raise money to cure my son's rare disease. And it's been successful so far, we're at 100 fifteen thousand dollars raised at the moment of recording but we need to hit a little bit more in order to fund the research that we're actually looking to fund so if you want to participate in that that'd be great but let's participate in the actual news now Hooray! so we're now getting reports that amd's fastest gpu that we're expecting out of the next generation the rx 7900 xt might actually have a faster older brother video cards reporting that they've heard sources talk about an rx 7900 XTX, and now they're confirming that their sources are also talking about the XTX, which is going to be a higher end version of the Radeon 7900 XT, possibly to start competing with the RTX 4090. Now the conversation would go to, well, what about a 950 XT, similar to how AMD did it with the current generation, going from the 6900 XT to the 6950 XT, and the speculation on that is that AMD might be reserving the 50 moniker for GPUs later that are built on a different setup like 3DV cache on the actual GPU die and not just on a CPU die. So taking a look at the anticipated specs of AMD's flagship GPU, which again is getting announced on November 3rd, what we have is the 7900 XT will only have 20 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, whereas the 7900 XTX would go up to 24 gigabytes and also have more memory throughput as well as more stream processing and have a total board power of 420 watts. So AMD expanding what the RDNA 3 GPU is capable of on the XTX GPU. Now, this is not the first time that AMD has given us XTX GPUs. We've in fact had those previously on a lot of generations ago. It hasn't been something that they've released recently, but it could be something that they bring back, especially as they're looking to compete with the behemoth that is the RTX 4090, sucking all that juice in power. Let me know if you'd be down to pick up an XTX down below in those comments. But that's not the only GPU information we're getting. We now have a report of the mobile RTX 40 series lineup that we're anticipating getting from NVIDIA. What we're seeing from leaked slides that look like there were some part of a presentation is the GN21 marketing naming of specific GPUs. And what you can see on this slide is that it goes from a 4060 all the way up to a 4090, conveniently skipping the RTX 4080. But one of the things to mention with all of this is that that 4090 would actually be based on the RTX 4080's desktops processor. So the 8103 instead of the desktop 4090's 8102. So it will inherently be slower and gone are the days of NVIDIA trying to convince everybody that their laptops are just as powerful as their desktop GPUs back when the 10 series launched because they were like the RIP desktop gaming laptops are where it's at. It's not something that's going to continue to happen. So obviously we only have one version of an RTX 40 series GPU at this point. So speculating on what the details are, are going to be on mobile, especially for something low end like the RTX 4050 is hard to say. But if the 30 series is any indication the RTX 3050 came out on mobile well before it came out on desktop and so if you're looking for a lower end 40 series class card it actually might end up in laptops first and what's going to end up on my lap first is some crypto stocks because as we've been doing this charity drive I've been talking about crypto stocks and like a couple people said they don't want it and a lot of people said that they did want it so if you're watching this as I'm filming right now because we are still live streaming me filming hot news let me know if you want me to keep crypto stocks or not but Bitcoin down a little bit. It's 19,337199 cents. Ethereum down also a little bit to 1344. And Dogecoin down also a little bit to be at 5.9 cents. Not a lot of movement in that market, but I move Reese whenever I see him with a big old bear hug. 
I'm gonna move his mark. Reese, can you please give us the UFD deals? Do you have them? Hey everyone, welcome back to UFD deals. We're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. We've had a crazy busy weekend. The cannibal stream has been going amazing so far. And I had a freaking birthday on Friday. I mean, I'm 30 now. It still kind of blows my mind. But enough about that. Let's jump straight into the deals today because we have a Thermalrite Silver Soul 110 in black. The super clean looking dual tower CPU air cooler is going for only $32.12, which is 30% off the usual price. And next up, we have the LG 42 inch OLED Evo C2 series with a 4K resolution, 120 Hertz refresh rate. It's for gaming. I genuinely made my mind up on the C1 and C2 series when I saw it in person and it just stood out against any other TV on display in the store. And you can find it going for only $996.99, which is 29% off and the lowest price in 30 days. That's it for the deals today. I hope to see you guys back in the Cannibal stream. Let me know if you picked up anything from UFD deals recently. I'll be down in the chat in the Cannibal stream. And now I'm handing you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Thank you, Reese. I'm so glad that you gave us those deals that are spectacular. I confirmed with him during the stream that he was going to do it. So there should be some, unless he's getting stage four load shedded because South Africa doesn't like to keep his lights on. And Discord doesn't like to work with things that aren't PCs, but it does look like we're getting Discord coming out to the PS5 sometime soon. We already have Discord on Xbox box integration, but it does look like it's now coming to Team Sony as well. However, only for the PS5, according to reports, there's no mention of a PS4 edition that's actually going to work. And so it's only going to be on the next gen console, which is likely going to upset a few people. But however, we're like three years into the PS5's release. I know a lot of people still can't get their hands on them, so that makes it a little bit more frustrating. But as far as like timeline, three years into a GPU cycle is kind of when you stop producing for the previous one, at least in how previous generations have gone. But in case you want a PS5 and you can't get one, if you come watch the charity stream, we're actually giving away my custom PS5 in case you want that. So again, another incentive for you to come watch us drive back home. It's going to be exciting. So that's happening. But in case you don't remember, Sony actually has a mind minority stake in Discord, so it's kind of intriguing that, that Xbox got the integration first, but it makes sense that they're getting it now. What doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me is that Steam broke its concurrent users milestone over the weekend, 30 million gamers playing video games or using the platform, rather, on October 23rd, Sunday. I don't, I, I, was there a game that launched? Was it, was it COD? Was it COD? Was that available on Steam? I don't know what's going on with this, but that's more than the previous record obviously because it's a new record that happened back in March. But a game that people might actually want to play on Steam is Kerbal Space Program 2 and that now has a new release date. Previously it was delayed but February 24th is when we're expecting early access on Steam for a lot of people's favorite space game and we're expecting a price increase on Apple's subscription services. The prices of Apple Music, Apple TV Plus are now going up. Music's going to go up to $11 per month instead of $10 and the family plan is going to go up to $17 instead of $15 and TV Plus is going to go from $5 a month to seven, and then it's going to go to a nice price of $69 for the year. In fact, I actually now have to start paying for Apple TV Plus because I got a free one year subscription to it. But out of all of the like streaming services, Apple TV Plus has blown me away with the quality of their shows. They're not releasing a whole lot. Their cadence is still picking up, but you got shows like Ted Lasso or my personal favorite TV show of this year, which was Severance. Like, they, they blew me away with the quality of that show. And so I'm actually happy to like $7 for Apple TV plus for me, I, I think I'm going to continue doing it, but let me know what you think of Apple raising their prices there. And Intel broke a record and this would made a, would have made a lot more sense next to talking about a Steam broker record, but Intel's Core i9 13900K, the 13th gen chips launching on October 20th. We saw them come out, but now we're getting more details of just what they're capable of. And they're capable of taking down a, I believe it was eight year record of the highest frequency CPU ever, which is on liquid nitrogen overclocking. That was actually for the FX8370 that was able to do just under 8.8 .8 gigahertz on the CPU when it was liquid nitrogen overclocked, the 13900K actually was able to hit 8.8 .8 gigahertz, as you can see in this screenshot here, 8812.85, a very, very fast chip. And one of the things that I actually uh, appreciate about this screenshot, as far as I'm aware, this was done by the Swedish extreme overclocker Elmore. And one of the things I appreciate about this is normally when you're trying to hit these super high frequencies, you disable a lot of cores. But in this case, they're using all of the 8P cores that come onto the 13900K and they still have the was activated and those eight cores hit 8.8 .8 gigahertz that is fan freaking 
fantastic, but another fan freaking tastic CPU that people might want to be keeping their eyes out for is the AMD Ryzen 7 7700 because that is now appearing in some reports coming out that the 7700 might start showing up. The 7700X, obviously the mid-ish high, it's hard to know what AMD's differentiators are, but it's the $400 CPU that AMD just launched that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, especially when you compare it to something like a 5800X3D. But if the Ryzen 7 7700 can actually come in at a price point that makes a lot of sense, even if it has a TDP of only 65 watts versus the 105 watts on the 7700X, we actually might see more movement on over to the Ryzen 7000 series of chips, because as we've talked about in previous episodes of Hot News, is the fact that AMD is dealing with a lack of demand for their CPUs, both due to the fact that the prices of the CPUs are really high, the motherboards are really high, the total upgrade costs are really high. In fact, you can watch the video where we did the cheapest Ryzen 7000 series PC that we could build, and the upgrade cost is 600 bucks, and you're only getting six cores and 12 threads for that price point, whereas you got something like Intel right now where you can still build DDR4, you can still build it on a budget chipset where it actually isn't $150 minimum, and you can also use DDR4, did I say that? The 13600K coming at $300 gives you 14 cores, so it's better for multitasking and seems to be just as good as gaming when it comes to the benchmarks that at least I have seen. And so if the Ryzen 7 7700 could be at like the $300 price point, I, I think AMD needs to drop the price of their CPUs all around. I'm almost done, Kyler, just wait. He wants to come in the car. If AMD can drop the prices of their CPUs all, all around, I do think that we could potentially maybe see an uptick in the amount of adoption that they're having on the Ryzen 7000. But until then, it looks like they're gonna struggle. And I'm gonna struggle to continue this episode of Hot News any longer because we need to get back on the road. Our car is finished charging. It's time for me to travel back home to Pennsylvania. But again, as this episode is live, we are actually still live streaming this drive back home, trying to raise money to cure my son's rare disease and we got Kyler sneaking in on the camera right there. Say hi to Kyler, come join us live right now. Love you guys, see you in the next episode of Hot News.